Hey, hey, what's going on? Yep, so I'm just making some roach chow. Um, before I go any further, I do want to tell you that I am not going to give up my recipe. Uh, we've been making the same recipe of roach chow for probably close to six years now. A couple times I did tweak it just a little bit, uh, but for the most part, it has all the same uh, base ingredients in it. Um, I just want to let you know that um, when, you, when you make your own roach chow, Couple things you want to, a uh, couple things you want to do when you make your own roach chow. One, you want to stick to as much plant material as possible. Now, you will mention people say, you know, they've they've raised their roaches on nothing but dog food, or uh, rat food, pig food, whatever that case is. Um, which you can successfully uh, raise a roach colony on those types of stuff. However, the meat protein is not good for the bugs. And what's not good for the bugs is not good for the dragons or whatever you're feeding your bugs to. Um, so you wanna stick to as much plant material as you can, such as wheat, um, oats, alfalfa, stuff like that. That's gonna be your healthiest bet, your safest bet. Uh, another thing when it comes to making roach chow, you wanna stick to as close to 17% protein as you possibly can. Uh, from everything I have read, a good 17 to 20 percent is the sweet spot uh, for your roaches, and it's the sweet spot for uh, you know the animals that are eating the roaches. Um, to achieve that, I use a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, and I put in all my ingredients, what their protein is, and there's a little bit of math involved. But uh, our roach chow is just right around, I think it's like 17.38 uh, percent protein. Um, so our normal batch is about 27 pounds of roach chow. However, on the batch we made yesterday, um, we kept out one of the ingredients. We we're actually out and had to go get more. So today I'm making an entire, it's actually a double batch, plus some of the roach chow from yesterday, just because it was missing that ingredient, I wanted to make sure it, it got some of that included. So I do want to say that, um, this is, none of this is an exact science. I'm not guaranteeing anything to you on this. Uh, I have not studied this in books or, you know what I mean? I, I don't have a, I don't have a chef's license to make our own roach chow. I've done trial and error and I know what works great for us. Uh, the, the ingredients we use seem to work really good. And over the last, you know, five and a half years, we have actually purchased roach chow. We have gotten samples of roach chow. Um, I'm talking like big name companies too, like Missouri, which I didn't even know before then that they made their own Dubia roach chow. Um, but we've had people that, that have been making their own roach chow and we've compared ours to theirs and we have ran tests to where we would actually put a cup of ours and a cup of theirs in the same tote and left them overnight and the results were staggering to the point where sometimes our roach chow would be 90 percent gone and their pile would be left untouched you know and i've done all kinds of different experiments and anybody who has who has ever bred anything on a, on a larger scale or trying to become a larger scale is going to run their own experiments you know you can only get so much from books and youtube eventually you need to create your own um, you know, you need to create your own numbers and your own experiments and see what works for you. So I do want to say as a disclaimer, you know, I'm not guaranteeing anything with, with, uh, our roach chow, but it, that's what works for us. Although this video is more about, um, what kind of stuff you can feed your roaches and less about our process, I am going to take you through a little bit about how we do it. Uh, I bought this industrial grinder. It's, it's mainly for dry kitchen foods. And if I'm not mistaken, I paid about $250 for this on Amazon uh, a couple years ago. It is more of a pain than the bigger ones. Um, not only that, this one broke a couple times, so I had to rig it up in a way that it still works, but it's not the greatest. But when I use it, we put in, you know, we'll fill this up and we'll grind it for 20 seconds. And we grind our entire batch like this for 20 seconds and then um, grind it all, 
put it in here for 20 seconds per batch and then we'll reverse it and grind it all up for another 20 seconds so it's the whole entire thing is ground for a good 40 seconds a batch um but because this is pretty old now and and the blades are kind of dull it, it is a little bit more chunky so the stuff that we sell at the reptile shows or on our website I tend to bring in an already ground batch and I'll re-grind whatever I'm gonna bag up to sell uh, just so you don't have any of the bigger chunks in it but occasionally you still will one of the uh, one of the things you got to keep in mind is they are roaches so even though you you there are certain things you want to stay away from like uh animal protein and animal fats um one thing you got to keep in mind is they are roaches and in most cases they say you know they'll they'll survive a nuclear war they are very hardy and they're they're strong so they can eat pretty much anything um but if you just have a small colony at home and you don't have you know you don't have the money or the time or whatever to go out and buy 50 pound bags of grain and mix up your own recipe there are certain things that you can get right at the grocery store you can buy oatmeal they sell them in one pound uh like little cardboard things just plain oatmeal without the added sugar you could use plain cheerios plain bran flakes you can mix that up just in a kitchen grinder or ninja or whatever those things are that grind up the food, um, a food processor. Um, what's up? Can I have a vanilla yogurt? Another uh, important thing I do with our road chow is after we make it, usually I'm gonna put a date on these bags. This is a bag I'm reusing. But because I do not have any on stock, I'm not gonna redate this bag. I know when I'm making it. Uh, but we always freeze it for at least 72 hours. And that's just in case there's any grain mites, grain moths, any kind of flies or bugs that we don't want in there. And trust me, we don't want any in there. Three days in the freezer is gonna take care of that for you. Even if you know you don't have any bugs or any chance of bugs in your grain, it's always a good idea to store it in the freezer uh, just to be on the safe side. Um, even though the grain mites aren't really gonna hurt the roaches, they are a pest and it's better to be safe than sorry because they are a pain to get rid of if they ever get inside of your roach colonies. If you need a good recipe, go on YouTube. There's tons of recipes. Um, there's a lot of people that make it a lot of different ways using a lot of different ingredients.